This month in Outer Banks history, the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse was relocated to save it from beach erosion. The first lighthouse at Cape Hatteras was erected in 1803, then eventually replaced by a new, taller lighthouse in 1870, which still stands today. At the time it was built, the lighthouse was 1,600 feet from the high tide line. But throughout the next century, shoreline erosion brought the ocean increasingly closer to the historic structure. And by 1994, ocean waves actually touched the base of the lighthouse during a December storm. Short-term efforts to control erosion, such as pumping in sand, constructing groins, and placing sandbag barriers had proven ineffective by the 1980s. Competing opinions on the best course of action to protect the lighthouse developed. The Save the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse Committee, chaired by famed photographer and conservationist Hugh Morton, believed the best recourse was to place seascape, or artificial seaweed, offshore in front of the lighthouse to deter erosion. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers proposed erecting a steel and concrete seawall around the lighthouse, which would eventually become an artificial island off the North Carolina coast. A third option, supported by the Move the Lighthouse Committee, proposed relocating the lighthouse further inland. In 1987, the National Park Service commissioned the National Academy of Sciences to determine the most acceptable method of preserving the lighthouse. Their report determined that the best course of action was relocating the lighthouse further from the shoreline. The project would ultimately cost $12 million, which was not appropriated until 1998 to 1999. Public opinion was largely against the move, which many citizens believed would put the lighthouse at unnecessary risk. The first elements to be moved were the ancillary structures to the main lighthouse tower, the original sidewalks, cisterns, the oil storage building by the tower, and the keeper's quarters. The chimneys on the houses, tower base, doorways, and light were all braced and reinforced. A sensor system was installed to monitor changes in stress on the tower during the process of moving it. A temporary steel support system was installed under the lighthouse base, which involved digging six feet down around the lighthouse and pumping out the fresh water surrounding its foundation. The foundation was slowly removed, one layer at a time, shoring up any space created to provide support to the surrounding structure. A steel beam mat was erected directly on top of the original 1870 pine timber mat to allow for even weight distribution. A unified jacking system was used to lift the 4,800-ton lighthouse up approximately six feet. Roller dollies were installed under the main beams, and hydraulic jacks were used to push the lighthouse down the track about five feet at a time. A 100-foot wide corridor was cleared and graded to create a path for the lighthouse to move to its new location. On June 17, 1999, at 3.05 p.m., the first push propelled the lighthouse forward five inches. It would move a total of 10 feet that first day. The process was so slow, one could barely see the lighthouse moving at all. The largest distance covered in a single day was 355 feet on July 1st. The journey was completed July 9, 1999 at 1.23 p.m. for a total of 23 days in transit. The lighthouse came to rest 2,900 feet southwest of its original location. The move was broadcast by international media worldwide and came to be known as one of the most significant and impressive lighthouse preservation projects in American history. To learn more about the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse or any other topic in eastern North Carolina history, come visit us at the Outer Banks History Center.